Hi everybody, welcome back for another video. I, um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about something. I think there's a little bit of a misunderstanding in the less lethal field. Uh, I think the paintballers sort of understand this. I think when it comes to less lethal, I think the idea of using your, your air tank for CO2 or to use CO2 cartridges instead of HPA air tanks has some theoretic advantage. Uh, sometimes the risks of that extra advantage um, are gr much greater than the benefit. And, and I just want you to be clear about a concept that you may or may not have ever heard of. Um, this is my VKS. This is my HPA tank. I, I use strictly HPA on the VKS. Now, I know that Pepperball sells a CO2 adapter for strike uh, as well. I think it's I think it's the same company, same product. Uh, and you can use an 88 gram CO2 or a 90 gram CO2. And you can run it through your marker and you can you can shoot. But when they do that, they have theirs tuned down for pepper balls and they're shooting them at pepper ball velocity. Now what happens when you crank this up for less lethal the way we do, you've got this thing opened up. Uh, all the air is gonna flow through. Uh, the other thing that um, and that's important because H HPA has got a lot of power and, and this, is, this tank is optimized for the internals. Everything is good to go. Um, but the problem comes when you try to uh, switch to CO2 and simultaneously crank up the velocity screw. When you do that, basically what you're doing is you're allowing more of the liquid CO2 that's in that tank to get into your marker. Now, also the liquid CO2 depends on how you hold the, the marker. If you have it at an angle like this, more liquid CO2 is gonna run down. Um, so paintballers always try to keep it angled up like this um, and they call it, you know, get going liquid. And, and for them, it's a bad thing because in paintball, if you, get, if you go liquid, your pressure up and down, up and down, very inconsistent. For them, uh, um, uh, FPS going up, is a bad thing. For less lethal, the, the philosophy uh, that seems to be emerging is that um, that is a good thing. And, and I'm just here to tell you that, be very careful. There's a thing called uh, rapid gas decompression. And I don't know if you've heard of this, but uh, your O-rings are very sensitive to this process and, it's, uh, and it affects you know, any type of elastomer that's used in any of the common types of O-rings. Uh, what is this? It's called explosive decompression uh, or rapid gas decompression. And I've got it pulled up here on the website. Um, and I'll just read to you what it says because I think it's important. Compression is an occurrence that occurs frequently at, at high when high stress gas particles drift into the elastomer in the concentrated or compressed form. So that's the liquid CO2 getting into your marker, coming in contact with your O-rings, and then it, drip, it, it actually permeates your O-rings. Um, the compressed gas inside the rubber attempts to broaden and escape from the elastomer, consequently causing rapid gas decompression. The detrimental effect of this swelling is not so much throughout the intake of the gas, but mostly while the system is stressed is rapidly released. So every trigger pull releasing that stress, you're, you're firing a shot, the pressure is dropping, that is when that, that, uh, that this decompression is occurring, and that is when you're getting damage to your O-rings. Um, and then this basically is a repeated process. Every time you shoot, you go through stress responses, you're getting this gas in. At the same time, you're also really subjecting those O-rings to uh, cold temperatures as well. So it's, it's a combination of a freezing and thawing of your O-ring and a rapid gas decompression, which it is really causing mechanical damage of your O-ring, whether you can see it or not. Um, damage to the rubber seals as a result of rapid gas decompression is a frequent issue in the oil and gas industry and high stress gas installations. Um, this is a very common phenomenon. Look it up on Google. I have it here on, on one particular page on Google. It gives you um, stress fractures of your O-ring and basically 
Uh, you may not have a problem in the short term. So you may, you may run your CO2 tank. You may get uh, a couple really good shots. And you'll notice uh, anytime someone uses a large CO2, they tend to either shoot really slowly or they show you a, a shot or two and then they say, well, that's an example, but they don't run through a whole mag and show you that it's consistent at a, a particular high uh, FPS because what happens is it's gonna be up and down, up and down. Those fluctuations are killing your marker. So just be very careful. You don't want this thing to fail. You've got a lot invested in this. You may have a lot of money in this. You may have a cheap marker that you've put a lot of time and parts into. You don't want it to fail. Your life is more important than risking your marker failing. Um, the Challenger disaster, 1986. I remember this very well. I was in high school. Um, that was due to an O-ring failure. Uh, O-rings fail all the time. Uh, so just keep in mind that that O-rings fail. That's 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 really your most important upgrade. I've talked about this in a previous video. Make sure you got the best quality O-rings. The only O-rings that can really handle liquid CO2 going through them on a regular basis are Durometer 90. The problem with that is Durometer 90 O-rings are not the right O-rings for most of the parts of your marker. They're too stiff. Uh, so, so it's not that there aren't O-rings that can't handle liquid nitrogen. It's just that the O-rings that you want to use uh, are probably not going to fit very well and they're not going to work. They need to be flexible enough. The ones that handle the air pressure need to be able to compress to fill the space and they go through these compression cycles. 90 is just too stiff. Same thing for polyurethane. Polyurethane is what you put on your tank. There's a polyurethane o-ring here. It's a non-moving part, really high pressure on the tip of your tank. So stronger durometer does not always translate to better quality performance. Um, so you're sort of stuck with something in between. So that's why I upgraded to Durometer 70, which is a significant upgrade from what comes stock with your Pepper Ball and your First Strike products. So that's what I recommend. But just keep this in mind. You need to know about O-rings. You need to understand what damages O-rings. You need to understand liquid CO2 properties. You don't have to be a physicist, but just be a master of Google. Type in... Um, rapid gas decompression, look at the information that's out there, think about your situation and how you're using your marker, and just be, care just be careful. Uh, this is a word of warning for anyone who wants to get more power um, by using large CO2s. Large CO2s are a problem. I, I, I do use CO2 in my TCP, uh, the little 12 gram, eight gram CO2s, there's not that much liquid to get into your into your marker. Also, it's in the, it's in the handle of the TCP, so it's facing down. So it's not going to be likely that you're going to be shooting down and getting it the liquid into your marker. With this, uh, same thing. It's it's um, it's a little more likely because it's horizontal, and it's also very possible that you are using a, uh, a shoulder strap and you've got this and you and then you want to drop it. And when you do, how does it go? It goes just like this. And so if you're using CO2 and you're using uh, the harness around your shoulder, uh, that combination is a big problem for getting liquid CO2 into your marker. Um, these things, if you are ever going to use that, they should be stored like this. They should be used cautiously. And the uh, and, and as the, they do with the pepper ball markers and for the police and for pepper ball products, they tune it down to a more reasonable velocity, pretty much a paintball velocity. But even the paintballers, they have their issues. They've moved away from CO2, mostly using HPA because it is far superior. There's just no question about that. So don't be fooled. Um, pay attention. Uh, learn, learn this stuff. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of information out there. Check out ANS Gear. They've got a lot of information about this going liquid. Uh, there's a lot of other O-ring uh, manufacturers with a lot of really useful diagrams, figures, information about various types of O-rings. Uh, I may talk about that more. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to dig deeper in any of these aspects. I, I think it's really important enough that it probably does deserve uh, additional time.
So everybody take care. I hope this was useful for you. If you like this type of topic uh, where I take a little bit of a deep dive in a really important reliability aspect of your marker, uh, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned because we have more to come. Everybody take care. See you next time.